Hello everyone and welcome back to another preview video here, another hands-on video here on 5X. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the new adjustment effects that have been added on Procreate 5X. So as I've mentioned on my previous, I, I believe my first ever video on 5X, this is where I believe the bulk of the updates on Procreate 5X are geared towards to. It's on the left side of the Y. So we're going to be spending a little bit more time on these ones. And I've already made a video about gradient maps, so I'm just going to go through rather quickly here in this one, but we're going to be focusing on adjustment effects. So for the gradient map video, I'm going to be linking right here on the top right side uh, of this video in case that you want to learn a little bit more. So let's get to it. The very first thing that I want to mention is that no matter what new effects Procreate actually has added here on the 5X version, for even for the old effects, we actually get these two options, these two applications. Basically, one is layer, which affects the whole image or the whole layer that, uh, of your image. In this case here, we have a flat illustration, so it's going to be affecting everything. So let me just go back here. So hue, saturation, layer. So if we change some of these values, as we know from previous versions of Procreate, we are affecting everything. And you can tap with one finger and hit reset here and it takes you out of the, uh, you know, the corrections that you, you have just created. But the beauty of Procreate 5X and the updates that are coming on is that now we have the pencil mode. So now, just by painting, as you can see here on the screen, I am painting with a brush, which is the wet acrylic. So now if I paint, you can see that I am affecting with a brush and I still get a chance to tweak more of these values and tweak the image to whatever that I want to do with a brush effect. So if we just reset here, and let's just say that I wanna you know, make this brush a little smaller, and I can paint just the eyes of my character right here, and now I can color correct the eyes to a different shade. Super, super cool, guys. So something like this, um, I could be painting more or less just the irises right here. And now if I just tap here, I can see, uh, you know, I can reset, I can undo, and I can even preview the before and after of this effect. So I'm just gonna hit reset, and now let's go back into the adjustments menu and take a look at the new features. So going very quickly on gradient maps, it's a great, great feature that allows you to edit, apply gradients, and these gradient maps are actually remapping the colors of your image so the darker tones on your gradient map will replace the colors on the darker parts of your image. The mid-tones will replace the average areas of your image. And the brighter kind of colors you're on the gradient will replace the brighter sections in terms of color of your image or illustration. So you can add more colors. You can swap between these gradients. You can duplicate these gradients by just tapping and holding. You can delete or duplicate and you can tap on the plus here and create your own gradient map. Super, super cool feature because it will, it will allow you to actually, you know, you can create a gallery of your post on Instagram. For example, you can have the original image and you can have the, uh, all the variations that you may create with some of these effects, gradient maps, uh, color, chromatic aberration, and so on and so forth. So let me just uh, hit cancel here and we're gonna go back into the actual effects that I wanna show you for this video. Well, the very first one is Bloom, and we're going to be first be applying as a layer. Bloom, as you probably know or guessed it, is uh, an effect that actually brightens up the brighter areas of your picture. So it is a slider effect, as you can see here. So very similar to Gaussian Blur. And the reason why I was just tweaking some of these options here is so that we could see a little bit better on the camera. But basically Bloom gives you three options. First, you got transition, which is basically how hard the edges of that Bloom you really wanted to make, uh, you know, the, uh, the transition from what's actually being brightened to what's not being brightened. So we're just gonna leave it at max at this point so that the transitions are softer. Then size actually also kind of helps with transitions because size is actually taking the amount of transition and increasing the feathering of the amount of bloom. And finally, burn is actually how much we actually want it to be uh, bright enough. What, what are the, you know, the, uh, the amount of bloom that we want to uh, add to this, to this picture? 
And just by adding a little bit, guys, see how cool the image actually starts to become. So you have all these effects at the bottom and then you still have the amount, the total amount at the very top, which is a slider. So you can be really, really careful and kind of create a very crafted bloom effect here that actually looks really, really cool when you compare it to the previous version. I hope the camera is capturing this as much as it can because I'm not going super strong here with this effect so that I can show you that there are some actual use cases where this can be really, really handy. So I'm just gonna hit cancel here because I just wanna show you that once again with the bloom, we can go with a pencil and now if I actually go into the brush section and I go with a very soft brush, now let's just say that I want to uh, bloom kind of like the corners of my picture right here. So maybe I'll put a little bit here, here and there. And now I can just kind of like decrease the amount of bloom that's happening in the burn. So something like this. So I'm kind of painting, choosing, you know, picking and choosing the areas that I really want it uh, to be bloomed rather than just using as an overall effect on, a ho on the whole layer. So once again, we're gonna hit cancel. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be applying these uh, changes because I actually want uh, us to be able to see what we can get actually in terms of before and after. So let's continue. So we've applied a little bit of bloom to this picture. Now let's uh, do a little bit of glitch. And once again, we can do layer or brush. We're gonna start with layer. And with glitch, you can also use a slider at the very top, which will give you the amount, the total amount of glitch with a few options. You also have the, you know, the total amount of the image that's been glitched, and you also have the amount of dispersion of these little glitch artifacts uh, that are happening on the overall image. We're gonna keep it about 67% or so. Then you have the block size, which is super cool. So I believe that for this effect here, I would probably leave it around 33% so that we can see the blocks that they're bigger. And then zoom kind of does the same thing, but in a really, really cool way. So as you pull back, you can see that you have these like bigger areas that you may want it to be also glitched or not. But what I really, really liked from all these modes, so you have wave, just show you what it does. It really kind of distorts the image, uh, not only as a sine wave kind of thing, but also slices the image quite a bit. Then you have signal, which totally creates very unexpected effects with kind of like uh, chromatic aberration at the same time, as you see the levels and the colors are being separated here. But I thought that Diverge was really like the one of the coolest kind of uh, glitch effects here on Procreate, and I will be definitely uh, using this one especially if I bring the zoom all the way down, it creates like, look how cool this looks, guys. It's just like a little bit of glitch, but creates these dots, and I just think that they're super, super cool, and it's so exciting to see that we have these features inside Procreate. We don't have to take this image anywhere else, and it's all within the application. So I really, really loved uh, diverge and there are more options here that I can see at the bottom there's the amount of uh, shifting of the channels so the red greens blues there's the you know the zoom that I was just showing you and I really really liked the effects here uh, that are happening currently so I'm just gonna apply that and we will continue with the effects next one is halftone halftone I'll probably show you guys so in fact I'm going to make a duplicate but I will keep uh, the one that I have with glitch at the bottom because halftone would really transform the picture as I believe. So I'm just going to be dragging this uh, as a slider once again, and you can be uh, you can you can be doing that as a full color as a screen print. So it kind of looks like a screen printed effect. Also love that, and is a, as a newspaper effect. So basically just using the dots as black dots and being able to uh, have a little bit of that or or just like having the dots like very, very big. In fact, having a little bit of a, a, a grid matrix of these dots is looking super, super cool. I might even leave it for the purposes of this demo. So I would actually apply just like that with the little dots, but I just wanna show you one more thing, which of course you can go back into the half tone, but now use it as a pencil. And I'm just gonna paint the outside of our um, character right here and 
adding a lot of like offset, you can see how it's only affecting the areas that we picked. So there are so many options, so many possibilities with this new version that's coming out with Procreate that is actually mind blowing for our illustrations. So let's keep moving with the effects list. And for the next one, which is chromatic aberration, I do have to actually bring the image back to its original form so that I can show you guys the, uh, you know, as clear as possible what it can be done. So chromatic aberration gives you two options. You have perspective and displace. So as a perspective, once again, we get the slider. And as you can see, it's using the as per perspective is using this kind of a, like, you know, aim or like target here. It's going to be the center or of where the chromatic operation will disperse from based on the total amount that we apply here at the very top. So 65%, around 66% starting from this center here is actually dragging and separating the channels from the center and creating some really, really inter interesting effects as the image gets farther and farther from that point. So it can do some really, really cool things. For example, we have a illustration that has a direct source of light and say it's like a lamp pole or some, some, somewhere like in an outside alley. You can add the chromatic operation starting from that source of light and kind of casting the chromatic operation outwards. Or if you have a illustration such as this one, I actually recommend you to maybe you can start from the center, kind of spread out the effect. The one that I actually really, really like, before I go there, let me just show you, you got transition, which is very similar to what we were looking, just a way to soften the effect. And then you also have the fall off. And the fall off, I believe, is like how much from the center from where you are picking up the effect, where it's actually not going to be affected. So the higher you go, it actually starts to uh, eliminate the effect from kind of a radius uh, that you can control here with this percentage. The one that I really, really loved was this place. And this is once again, how Procreate actually kind of redefines the usage of these effects that already exist in the market for quite a while. So I've been using chromatic operation a lot in software such as like Photoshop After Effects especially, but this way, just the way that it's done on Procreate still blows my mind. So on this place, basically it's based on the location that you set with your Apple Pencil. So as you can see here, you get to, uh, you know, you separate the channels, but it's up to you to where you want to put them. So for example, I can just set them like around here, or I can go a little closer if I want to, and then I can play with transparency. So it's kind of like subtle, it's there, but not really. And also I can give it a little bit of blur or not if I want to. So once again, if I get closer, and if I want this effect to be almost noticeable, but not really, I can get a little bit closer even. And as we zoom in into the picture, we can really see that there is some chromatic aberration happening. But if we zoom out, we just don't see it as much. And if I want to be really, really strong with that, I can just kind of like slide even more with my Apple Pencil. And I, I just think that this way, it just makes sense. It, it's basically like it just makes sense to be using on an iPad, on an illustration application, this is the best way to actually apply an effect like this. So we don't have to rely as much with sliders, percentages, and stuff like that, and just be more natural on how we apply these effects. The next effect is noise, and I just wanna be able to show you on a clean image so you can see really what it does. Starting with a blank canvas here, you got clouds, billows, and ridges. So I'm gonna up the scale here and up the noise. As you can see, it's adding this really, really nice grain that is so helpful when you want to create, uh, you know, images that have that quality that feels like they have been printed or have been captured, not in a digital way. So grain is like, it, it's so, so important on a lot of uh, digital illustration work because it gives that more of a tactile approach to your illustrations. So let's play a little bit here with the scale. So definitely scale, you can have it like feeling more grainy or not. Octavus, I think just making things like a little bit more interesting actually if I up the value here. And turbulence, I'm not seeing like a lot of difference here. I guess you can you can be additive, you can be multi, multi or single kind of application. We will leave now on multi and I just wanna see the differences. Wow, Billows is really, really cool. It kind of feels more analog in my opinion. And finally, Ridges. 
also looks pretty cool. Honestly, it's going to be really fun to just play with these things and see which one feels better for uh, for the uh, each illustration. And I think I'm gonna leave it. That number was really, really good. I believe I had it about 50% or so, um, or maybe it was even less. Yeah, I think a good 45 for now. And uh, one thing that I'm actually really interested in looking or seeing this is that right now I've applied onto a layer already onto like the layer of my illustration. So I wonder what happens if I go, for example, overlay. So uh, I think overlays actually, you know, is going to burn the bright sections a little bit. But as you can see, I'm trying to blend the image that I had with grain to my original, which didn't have grain. So even if I do it, um, I guess normal and just take down the opacity to about halfway through, you see that I'm applying a little bit of grain, but trying to retain the original uh, halfway as well. So also being smart on how we apply these effects, it's so important because you can actually achieve more now by having all these effects in Procreate 5X and being able to blend them back into your original illustration layer if necessary. So finally, guys, just before and after here, just showing you that from this image, you can on your gallery on Instagram, for example, you can put a close up that looks super cool like this one. And you can say this is part of the process that I've been illustrating this week. This is my latest illustration. And here are some of the outtakes that I've created also using Procreate. So all in all, super, super cool additions. Uh, Procreate is really going uh, stronger on the effects list here because it already has such a good creation kind of mechanism and tools on the right side of the UI. So I really think they're going super strong on the left side here. So I believe that about covers for the effects list on the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the performance features, some of the color stuff that you can do and other small things. So stay tuned for the next video. If this video was helpful for you, a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you don't miss any of these videos and it's all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.